Welcome to Morning Prayer at St. George's Anglican Church, Paris, on Wednesday, the 23rd of December. Today's readings are taken from Psalm 130 and 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 to the end. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. In your tender compassion, the day, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us, to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie, they shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Word of God, Psalm 130 My soul waits for the Lord. Out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. My soul waits for the Lord. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than the night watch for the morning more than the night watch for the morning my soul waits for the lord O israel wait for the lord for the lord there is mercy with him is plenteous redemption and he shall redeem israel from all their sins my soul waits for the lord father we commend to your faithful love those who are crying from the depths. Help them to watch and pray through their time of darkness. Ensure hope of the dawn of your forgiveness and redemption through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice.
the desert shall blossom and burst into song. They, sh they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not. Your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. I'll be reading from Second Peter. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of deepest darkness to be kept until the judgment, and if he did not spare the ancient world, even though he saved Noah, a herald of righteousness, with seven others, when, the, when he brought a flood on a world of the ungodly, and if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction and made them an example of what, was, what is coming to the ungodly. And if, he and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man greatly distressed by the licentiousness of the lawless, for that righteous man, living among them day after day, was tormented in the righteous soul of their lawless deeds that he saw and heard. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, especially those who indulge their flesh in depraved lust and, whose, and who despise authority. Bold and willful, they are not afraid to slander the glorious ones, whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not bring against them a slanderous judgment from the Lord. These people, however, are like irrational animals, mere creatures of instinct, born to be caught and killed. They slander what they do not understand, and when those creatures are destroyed, they also will be destroyed, suffering the penalty of doing wrong. They count it a pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their dissipation while they feast with you. They have, they have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed, accursed children. They have left the straight road and have gone astray, following the road of Balaam, son of Boso, who loved the wages of doing wrong, but was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These are waterless springs and mists driven by a storm. For them, the deepest darkness has been res reserved for they speak bombastic nonsense, and with licentious desires of the flesh, they entice people who have just escaped from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption, for people are slaves to whatever masters them. For if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overpowered. The last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than, after knowing it, to turn back from the holy commandment that was passed on to them. 
It has happened to them according to the truth proverb, the dog turns back to its own vomit. And the soul is washed only to wallow in the mud. Now it is time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Like the sun in the morning sky, the Saviour of the world will dawn. Like rain upon the meadows, the Christ will come down upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of his salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Like the sun in the morning sky, the Saviour of the world will dawn. Like rain upon the meadows, the Christ will come down upon us. We offer intercessions for the day and its tasks, for the world and its needs, and for the Church and her life. We pray for the Church, that she may be ready for the coming of Christ. We pray for the leaders of the Church. We pray for the nations, that they may be subject to the rule of God. We pray for those who are working for the justice of the world. We pray for the broken, that they may find God's healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that she may look for this coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.